Hello everyone, this is Jimmy, and welcome to episode 11 of the Volcano Block. Uh, as we get started today, I think I realized one thing I uh, misspoke about with regards to these prune seeds yesterday, and that was that they needed to be near a gas lantern to grow. I think it's just that they need to be near light, and the gas lantern, conveniently when it's powered and producing carbon dioxide, also produces light, which is why uh, it appeared to be a solution. But uh, no, it was really the light that was fixing it. Anyways, um, I've been in here holding shift for about the last minute to grow a few more, uh, you know, cause these plants to grow a little bit faster. If I'm not, like, actively encouraging their growth, they still grow reasonably fast. Like, right now I've let go of shift, and every now and then you see a plant grow, but uh, it's orders of magnitude faster if I hold shift here. But anyways, um... I've been doing this so that we could have a reasonably large stockpile of coal dust. Um, for starters, let's, well, let's get rid of that chicken. Wow, I one-shot him with a wand. Anyways, um, and let's replace this chest with a drawer system. Or not drawer, but like the barrel system, right? I know these barrels have a controller and stuff that we can use. So, uh, so that we can hold more than a couple stacks of stuff. I took one look at the shipping container recipe and I was like, oh dear, there's a lot of iron. Six blocks of iron plus basically another block. So basically seven blocks of iron or a uh, shipping container. But we can make it. Um, we just have to process more iron. So I'm just throwing more stone into our atomic reshaper here. Uh, I've been every now and then just harvesting like this stuff and then I'll throw it into the... Uh, the matter reshaper as well to make more primordium um or the primordialist reactor rather and while this process obviously isn't fully automated because it involves me harvesting uh we get a lot pretty quickly and this primordium stuff lasts a long time right each piece of primordium makes i think it's 10 ores if memory serves me right um although we're getting near the point yeah we're getting near the point where we can start making ores via orchid so uh, once that happens, we won't even need this atomic reshaper anymore. But anyways, um, we're going to have to use up seven blocks of precious, precious iron to make the shipping container. no can do yet the composer cell which is a part of the composer it also takes terra steel not just this other stuff that we have but uh we'll definitely want this system at some point because it makes uh well i'm pretty sure there's a quest for it yeah it's actually immediately after the terra steel quest um you there's also a multi-block that has to go along with the composer but uh yeah it's what completes the chapter so i guess i'm getting ahead of myself uh, in light of that then, let's just see, how much iron do I have in here? Ten pieces, huh? That's not very much. But at least we can process iron slightly more effectively now. Using the mechanical squeezer, we get two and a half dust per. And so far, I've high rolled and gotten three twice in a row. Ah, cursed it. In this case then, because I only have two item source, or two different types of items, um, I just won't bother with the controller. So we'll import out of the chest a while it's fast and uh, distribute it between these two drawers. Which, by the whoopsies, by the way, can these be locked in some way? 
Um, is it like a arrow key? Hey, would you look at that? A crate key. Now that I'm producing this enriched coal, uh, I just need a way to automatically feed it to this to these endo flames. So I want every how long does this go for? Every five thousand ticks to drop ten items here. Um, at least that's one way to do it. You can also just drop more items and then let them pick them up before they despawn. Plenty of ways. But let's uh set up a system probably once again use the integrated dynamics because that's really the only mod in this pack that makes transporting items around easy so we'll use that to set up um, a system that will drop coal as needed the upside of doing this with integrated dynamics is that it's very compact the downside is it does require a little bit of programming knowledge so um let me walk you through what i have set up here i have a world item exporter this is effectively just a dropper uh, you can configure it to drop everything drop a certain number of items yada 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 um and here i have a redstone reader which normally reads the redstone you know the redstone state of the block it's connected to however it can also be configured to be an integrated redstone clock and you see here we can right now i have this clock configured to 50 ticks just so that we can like see it working but every 50 ticks it generates a 10 pulse or 10 tick pulse um, and then I assume that, I don't know what pulse time offset is, but I have it set to zero. So anyways, um, you know what, why don't I take all my variable cards out and reset them so that we can program this entire thing together. Because for those of you that haven't used integrated dynamics before, it's a little bit confusing. All right. So I have a bunch of blank variable cards and a program logic control. First thing I want to do is I want to get a variable that corresponds with this clock. So I take a card, put it here, and now I have this variable. This variable will be, I, it's a Boolean type, so it's either true or false depending on the state of this clock. It has an ID of 21. Next, I want to say, if this redstone clock is high, I want you to place item entities. If the item, if the clock is low, I want you to not place item entities, I want you to place zero. So I have what is effectively a conditional statement here. If clock if true, uh, I want this value to be 10, or however many endo flames I have. If false, I want it to be zero. And that is something the logic programmer can do. It has a something called a choice. Oopsies, I have to actually type into the text box, huh? A choice. And this is basically saying if Boolean value, if true, then this, if false, then that. So I want to say if, well, before we get here, I'll skip this skip, I need two constants um two constant integers with values of zero and ten those just happen to be magic integers that match up with the number of endo flames i have all right once again let's go back to that choice now my logic is if this is true i want 10 right i pick the card that has value 10 otherwise if false, zero. Let me read that just to make sure I have it in the right order. If the first value is true, the second value is taken, the y third value. Type two and three, the type of two and three must be equal, yeah. And then we can put a variable card here, which stores this logic condition into this variable. So now that I have this variable, which is a choice variable, I can put that into here on place item entities, but then you see it complains that variable ID 21, 22, and 23 are not in the network. Those are the three variable IDs that we set it, set it up with, right? 21, 22, and 23. So we have to place these into a variable store on the network. Um, think of these kind of like as, I'm tempted to call them object references, although I suspect the people that understand what that means also don't need me to explain how to do an if statement. So, um, but they, they're references to the uh, states that we've referred to here. That's why by keeping them in this uh, as part of the same network, this card can say, you know, it knows when it asks for variable ID 21, it gets a look here, see, uh, yep, 21. Variable 21 is a redstone clock that's attached to this breadstone reader. But anyways, um, if we look at this, every now and then, if the value flashes to 10, right? And it's configured to drop items every, uh, at least 
I don't know. I, I through experimentation, I found that giving it a value of ten for or giving a positive value for ten ticks is enough that it will always drop exactly one set of items. So if I put my fuel in here, we see every fifty ticks, it drops ten pieces of coal. Now in practice, I don't want it to drop fuel every fifty ticks, right? I want it to drop fuel every uh, five thousand ticks. So I just have to come here to my clock and set this to 5,000 instead of 50. Um, now when I put fuel in here, it'll just sit in there until 5,000 ticks have passed. Unfortunately, I think there's no way for me to view exactly how many ticks have passed, but uh, after, you know, 5,000 ticks, which is what, about four minutes, right, 250 seconds, a hair over four minutes, it'll drop 10 pieces of controlled fuel, and uh, those will burn in these endo flames and be sent to our mana pool. So now all I have to do is um, keep enough enriched coal in here and we have a system that will automatically fuel our endo flames. There is actually one more thing I want to do and that is I want to detect if the mana pool is full to shut the system off. For this I want to test if the mana pool is emitting a comparator signal greater than or equal to um, let's say let's say 14. So 15 is a fully full pool but 14 is the point at which we don't want to drop any more new fuel so uh in the redstone reader here there's a comparator value i already have this synced here but uh this just reads the um you know it reads a comparator value so you don't need a literal comparator we want to connect that to our network so uh anything that's connected via logic cable is going to consider to be on the same network then i just want to set some more logic here I want to test if this value is greater than or equal to, let's say, if that is greater than or equal to, uh, it should be an integer, right? Yeah. Um, so I need actually a fixed value of 14 first. So I want an integer value of exactly 14. And then I want to take greater than or equal to 14 and this is a boolean value, true or false. Um, so, okay, let's go ahead and put these two into here, into our variable store. And now we can use this value in another choice uh, command. So now I want, we want to choose between, let's see, this value. Oh, no, no, not that one. Uh, the one I have in here. This one and that one right so the idea is if the value let's come up with another choice uh if hold on i'm drawing a blank here got it so the logic here is if our mana pool is greater than or equal to 15 that is is it full if our mana pool is full, then we do not want to drop items, right? We want zero. Otherwise, we do the default logic. The uh, This was our timer-based logic. So we save that to a variable card. We put that variable card here, and then we put its references into the variable store. And now, um, if for demonstration purposes, perhaps, let's set... Uh, redstone clock here back to 50 and we should observe that items start dropping again good one quick correction and that is that uh endo flames only burn fuel for half of the furnace burn time so i uh because this fuel burns for 5,000 ticks i have to change this timer to 2500 which is half of 5,000 anyways i'm gonna make some mana steel by throwing soul steel into the mana pool and ooh, that's going nice and tall and uh with this mana steel i'm going to make a mana splitter i saw that there was some quests see, it's actually that in the system i saw that there were some quests down the line that um potentially take a lot of mana so what we can do is use a mana splitter downstream of this mana pool basically you shoot mana in one side and it outputs mana on three sides to bank just a couple extra mana pools worth of mana um like this one requires five terra stealing it's right that's 
two and a half mana pools worth of mana to do in one go. So I want to make it so that by the time I get there, I have enough mana. Well, now that we are uh, halfway through the episode, let's do our first quest of the day. That is to make the runic altar. So that requires a mana pearl or mana diamond. Um, I think neither of them are easy. Let's do the uh, diamond. I think I have more... Uh, was it flawless diamond or was no it was end diamond right mm. oh no this is basically just an electric diamond all right so we'll make a end diamond and then may as well turn all of these into uh mana diamonds there we go we'll make mana pearls later i'm sure i'm sure i can only avoid it for so long but uh Mana diamonds, turn that into a runic altar. All right, quest complete. What does that give? Four diamonds. I'll take it. Now, because we have three mana pools, in order to uh, properly draw mana from all three of them for use on the runic altar, we need three mana spreaders. So, um, let's give myself a little bit more room here to work with. Goodbye, lava. The sound is very... I don't know, it feels good to hear. I guess technically I only needed two mana spreaders, because each mana spreader can pull mana from any adjacent mana pool, but uh, whatever, having three just makes it craft faster, although it'll asymmetrically load our mana pools. Not that that's really a problem. Um, anyways, mana altar is done. Next quest is to make a atomizer. So, nothing here requires the mana or the runic altar, but let's make one of those real quick too. This is easiest quest I've done all day. Of course, it's also the second quest I've done all day, but we can ignore that little detail, right? All right, an atomizer uses 50 epi a tick to... Uh, well, we also get a liquefier. What does it do? It makes... Ah, I see. It turns stuff into their alchemy variants from liquids. I assume we just need that as part of the Rune of Water. Um, I'm not sure. Let me get start gathering up the components for the Rune of Water. I'm sure the uh, atomizer gets used here somewhere. Ah, here we go, for wet sand. Getting all the materials for the runes is shaping up to be like a 30 step process. All of these things, most of it's stuff we've made before, but it's like, you know, earlier I just made enough corrupty dust uh, so I guess it's kind of my fault for not overcrafting. But anyways, I'm on the last step now, and that is I need some leather. So we're going to summon some cows. Uh, do I have fruiting on any weapon yet? I have four, but that doesn't count. Just now. All right. But uh, we're going to kill some cows for leather. And is that spawning? Yeah. All right. Somewhat unexpected problem. Cows don't... Uh, ow. They don't uh, fit down our the one by one hole that they're supposed to fall down. So I guess I have to go up to meet them. Well, I'm just gonna do this, get a little bit of leather, and hopefully we don't have to murder any more cows afterwards. That's awkward. I can't seem to get out. Oh! My own ender tether is tethering me here. I was like, am I this bad at throwing under pearls? No, just Ender Tether forces you to teleport to it. <laughs> Alright, problem solved. In the spirit of overcrafting, I'm going to make enough... Uh, I'm going to make four batches of these, even though the quest only calls for two runes, because I'm sure we'll use some sometime. Or at least probably. Um, let's also take a second look at how full our mana pools are. About a third full, on average, maybe? So we're like one total mana pool. All right, anyways, uh, throw one of each on, and it starts crafting. And then once that sweep finishes, throw a living rock and right-click it, and repeat. All right, thankfully we have enough mana that I don't have to actually wait for the mana. These runes don't actually take a tremendous amount of mana to make, so that's nice. Uh-oh, the next quest, though, is to make the Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate, which leads directly into the 5 Terrestrial Quest, and as we just saw, I only have one mana pool available right now. 
But uh, let's bake this, we'll go from there. I might have to add more endo flames or something. Um, so this looks like the regular recipe, which unfortunately means I need now to make the other four types of runes. Um, Alright, these recipes are... Yeah, they're about as annoying as uh, that first one was. Due to a lack of resources, because almost none of my raw resource production is automated right now, I'm only going to make one set of each of these runes. One set is still two runes, and all these runic altar recipes that use them uh, refund the rune. So uh, one of the runes that we're making right now will be consumed to make the agglomeration plate, but um, that still leaves us one rune for crafting like the higher tier runes and stuff with. I'm on the very last one here, the Rune of Air. However, the Fiddledoo fruit here, which is, by the way, very good food, requires, uh, it's apparently made of broccoli. So we're going to have to make some broccoli seeds. And if memory serves me right, broccoli also has to be planted in... Oh, never mind. It can just be planted on farmland. I was about to say it has to be planted on a uh, greenhouse. Although it doesn't seem to be growing here. Let me double check the uh, documentation and see what exactly Broccoli's requirements are. Um, all right, I guess maybe I just see bone meal. That is very thorough documentation that very help definitely helps me. Yeah. Okay. I guess it just doesn't, uh, it doesn't like being, being shift clicked or whatever shift farted on. But uh, I also can't harvest it by right-clicking. Anyways, uh, if I just get four pieces of this, that will suffice. This is the first time we've had to use the flawless calculator. The plus divide plus one. Uh, so this is broccoli plus broccoli divided by broccoli is one. So two broccoli plus one apparently equals fiddledoo fruit. Who'd have thought? I am so close to having everything together. However, uh, on my last item, I'm drawing a blank on the on how to make this colorful feather. So I have all the other dyes except for black dye. Um, the three black dye options are vanilla ink sacs, atom dye, which I can't get this item. So I think uh, we can write that off. It says it's crop nether wart, but I don't know. I can't. And even then, I can't make a corn anyways. Um, lastly is the black mushroom powder. However, this creates chicken or egg because you need uh, that to make it. So I think I have to somehow spawn a squid. Um, I obviously, I can't do the chemical combiner yet. And this block does not have a pouring recipe. Um, this requires ink to make ink. So we still aren't getting anywhere. The only option I can think of is to spawn a squid. But... The squid essence comes from the scale chunk, uh, which only comes from these three fossils, of which only the red sand one is craftable, and I still haven't come up with a way to actually make red sand yet. We've tried the uh, drying basin, right, where we put sand into it, however, the sand just sits in the drying basin and it never actually... Uh, well, I guess that's with a hopper under it. But even if I don't have a hopper under it, it just sits there forever. Let me make another drying basin and test that again. Yeah, so I think it might be because uh, sand can be made. Can it be made in a drying basin? No, it can't. Why was it being automatically extracted? I don't know. It doesn't think, though, that red sand is something that we can validly make here. Um, and we can't just make red sandstone and crush it because I can't make red sand. So I'm still left at the point of how do I make red sand to make the, uh, the sand fossils? I guess I can try the mechanical basin. Maybe, maybe that'll work. No can do. Putting sand in a mechanical drying basin still doesn't actually turn it into red sand. In fact, that recipe doesn't show. Wait, it does show up here. Sand becomes red sand. Why? All right, I've got to be overlooking somewhat, something. There has to be a way to get one of these black powders, right? The quest book doesn't seem to give me any advice. I think I figured it out. If I make it Alchemy Catalyst, 
then I can take terracotta and transform that into red sand. So, uh, I guess, I don't know if this is the intended way to make red sand and the other recipe showing is just a bug, or if, uh, well, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. Throw terracotta into there. This makes red sand. Now that I have some red sand, is there an easier way for me to make more red sand out of it? I don't think so, right? Not unless I do some type of, like, red sand duper. Um, alright, whatever then. Next up, we can take this and add fossils to it in this machine. Eat up. Oh, dang it. I always forget to turn it off and it always ends up running out of fuel. Good news is I have plenty of fuel, I just have to, like, carve it up from time to time. But, uh, I should really stop forgetting to turn it off. With our red sand having been fossilized, we added fossils to it. Break that, get scales, break these, and squid essence. Perfect. Um, hey, stop that. Anyways, let's make a squid book now. So, make an empty soul book. Oh, that was my last book. And add some squid essence to it. And then we can swap our spawner over from cows to squids. Um, naturally, the squids will probably just suffocate before they fall down. But as long as we get the uh, ink sacs, that's all I'm really after, right? So, spawn please. I did max out our spawner sometime recently with uh, 16 blood orbs and oscillating gears. Um, it still takes forever to spawn mobs, I feel. Alright, well, there's an ink sack. Perfect. So, that ink sack makes a colorful feather. Alright. Now, I think we can go craft the last of the runes. And then we'll be ready to make the terrestrial agglomeration. Oopsies, don't need that. Uh, plate. Or amalgam. I forget which one it is. Terrestrial something plate. Mm -hmm, runes. All right, so that's all uh, five tier one runes. With those, we can make the terrestrial agglomeration plate, and then this is a small, oopsies, small multi-block that uh, requires. I think it's some lapis, some lapis blocks, and some living rock blocks. Let's go set this up near our mana production. The multi-block is a, I guess like an X pattern of living rock and fill in the gaps with lapis. It could be the other way around. Um, not a hundred percent sure actually, but that makes the terrestrial agglomeration plate. Um, and then all we have to do is make Terra steel now. So let's first mark our quest complete. Uh, we could burn this, but we have plenty of other fuel. Um, now, Terra Steel requires mana steel, mana pearls, and mana diamonds. So we need five. Well, we have three of these. How are these made again? End diamonds. Do I have two more end diamonds? No. Let's go harvest our diamond tree. There's quite a few grown bits here. So uh, the weakened diamonds we get from this aren't very useful. I'm really just after the... Uh, the uh, flawless diamonds. Basically, one flawless diamond becomes one end diamond. So. Well, a full harvest got me nine flawless diamonds. That's not half bad. So, we just have to combine these with blaze rods. We get fire diamonds. Then strike our fire diamonds with lightning. I never bothered hooking this up to, like actually consume the power out of here because the power it produces is so low but it looks like it's about to get struck by lightning let's watch it the effect is kind of cool there's like a flash of lightning okay maybe it's not all that cool but uh, it generates a little bit of power um approximately 22 rf a tick on average which is not very much to transfer mana onto the agglomeration plate you want to place a spark on it and a spark on each mana pool that will be providing mana like so and then uh i still have to convert let's just use this pool these and those into their mana variants now we probably don't quite have enough mana to make all five um yeah in fact we it takes half a mana pool each at least by default it's perhaps conceivable that it's been changed but it looks like we have enough mana for about three 
uh, throw it on there, watch a pretty spinny bits spin around for a couple seconds, and ta-da, Terra Steel. How much mana did that take? Yeah, I'd say that took about uh, a sixth of a mana pool from each pool, right, because it's probably from three. So three-sixths or one-half makes one ingot. Uh, uh, for now, let's make the three ingots we can, but that's probably going to uh, be where we wrap things up today, because after we make this one, there won't be enough mana to do anything else. After that third piece of Terra Steel, our mana pools are basically completely dry. So, uh, oh look, we just ran out of coal too. Why don't I go add a bit more coal to that, but we'll wrap up today's episode here. Uh, five stack, all right. Um, and next time we'll come back after uh, I've let the mana just run for a little while. And we should have enough mana to um, make the rest of our Terra Steel. Some other stuff we have to craft in here. That's a lot of Dark Ender Steel. How do you make this? I hope it's not difficult. Oh, no. Okay, that's, yeah. That's fine. Uh, this is going to require some iron. But, um, yeah, I'll do some uh, resource preparation between episodes. We'll come back next time, continue down our quests, and we should be able to reach Chapter 5. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.